um, you know, it feels to me like like in the very near future, we're going to be faced with the the consequences of being out of alignment with the natural order of things. And we can avoid that no longer. It's going to come back to us very strongly as, you know, as a mirror. And a lot of people are going to have to wake up very quickly um, as, as these consequences start to unveil. Yeah. What I'm, what I'm, actually, what I'm conscious of, actually, is a lot of people listening to the show who probably haven't got a lot, not a lot, um, a lot of knowledge about Ascension. Okay. So I think it would just be good to sort of, in a nutshell, describe what Ascension is. And is it? can anybody get involved in it? And also, what happens to people who don't get in, involved in it, I guess? Yeah, some great questions, yeah. Okay. Well, um, first off, I think we should say that Ascension is a very normal, uh, very almost... Well, can I call it ordinary? <laughs> I'm not sure I can, but it's a, it's a natural process of the universe moving from a lower vibrational harmony to a higher one. It's like, um, you know, if you, if you imagine different stations on a radio, um, you can tune into a particular radio station at a low frequency, a low vibration, and then you can turn into a higher ones. Well, humanity so far has been only tuned into the, you know, one station, basically. But we have a whole vast array of other possibilities that we can tune into. And be- because, we, because we create our world and our experience of the world by what we expect it to be, if we keep expecting a certain reality, then that's what we're going to get. And we're not going to sense the higher vibrational planes. So that's, first off, that's one reason why ascension isn't something that gets talked about you know in the general public or the general media because it's it's not on the radar screen it's not something that is that is actually real for them yeah you know, because 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 the concentration has been far too focused in the plane of materiality yeah just just to sort of come in there as well though i think there's a someone's building a very fearful version of Ascension with 2012, aren't they? Yes. They're kind of painting this doomsday picture. Sure. Taking the Mayan calendar out of context. We've got a big film coming out this year as well. So I think there's people like yourself and, um, you know, people on my side, we've got a lot of work to do to try and get the real story out there about awakening. We have indeed. You're absolutely right. I mean, in in our work, um, we... You know, we use meditational techniques to help people experience the fifth dimension, what that's all about and how it really is. And it's, it's a place, as, as, as you, you certainly know, of profound joy, harmony, um, love, transparency, and honesty are the key things. So when, when two beings meet, there is total transparency between those two beings. There's no hidden agenda. Um, and that, and that for me is a really powerful experience. And the, and the important thing is for anybody who's kind of new to this is we're not talking about, you know, leaving this plane of reality and moving somewhere else to experience it. Ascension and the fifth dimension can be experienced right here, right now in a, in a third dimensional body. Basically what you're doing is you're opening yourself up to lighter, higher, more subtle vibrations, feelings of joy, feelings of at one with all things, um, feelings of our total interconnectivity with life. These are the things that you can tune into right here, right now. And, and you know, it's available to every single one of us. Mm. So synchronicity seems to be a signpost from the universe in a way, do you think? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Synchronicity is such an important um, tool. And I mean, let's look at what synchronicity is for a moment. Um, Because there is this order in the universe, um, because there is a flow to increasing order, then you're going to see apparent chance coincidences. But it's not, of course, they're not chance coincidences at all. They're they're, um, the, it's the universal language of love. It's basically saying, hey, we are all one. We're all interconnected. And if you just open for a moment to the possibility that we're all, we're all co-creating this reality together, then synchronicity can be a powerful 
objective message, you know, where you sometimes, where we might sometimes be a little bit confused as to what we're being told and what we're experiencing. Synchronicity can be the objective hand, the, the referee, if you like, that says, yeah, this is, this is the truth. This is what's really going on. Yeah. I mean, I find it absolutely incredible. Um, the, the moment I started to take notice of numbers, I mean, I got the 1111 all the time. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then basically, so, we, yeah. so you get that as, as well. Yeah. Um, and then I started to notice, actually, I did. I read a book by Drumvelo Melchizedek, and he uh -huh. talks about the numbers 111222, all up to 999. Yeah. And then literally the next day, in, in quick succession, I saw... 222, two, two, then 333, three, yeah. three, then 444, four, four. and then I woke up in the middle of the night, turned over, looked at the clock, it was 333, three, three. went yeah. downstairs in the morning, looked at the clock, it was 555. Five, five. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Literally, what within 24 hours? <laughs> absolutely, yeah. I know once you start looking, um, it, it gets stronger and stronger, and actually, it's a language that you can build and build and build. The more attention you bring to it, the stronger it gets. And benevolent consciousness, you know, our soul family or guardian angels, whatever you want to call it, um, they will speak through synchronicity. So, for example, if, you, if we go about life with a truly open mind, with no agenda, and we ask the question, what would you have me do now, or how would you have me be now, then um, benevolent consciousness is going to speak to you through basically telepathic knowing exchange. You will, you will get a feeling, get a knowing, to look at something to connect with something, to read a sign. And if you stay open, then the meaning of that sign will come to you. And we are, we have, we are adept at this skill of reading synchronicity, but you do have to practice it. You do have to, you know, it's something, it's like riding a bike. You have to keep practicing. Yeah. It's kind of like, uh, I don't know, it's like, but one thing, life looks chaotic and crazy, and you could say that we've got free will, so nothing's predestined. But yeah. then over the top of that, it's like at some really high level, you know, where obviously the universe is geometric and stuff like that. There just to be, there seems to be this beautiful order to everything. Absolutely, absolutely. I, I and I think the point is, where are we coming from when we see synchronicity or make choices? So, for example. In the beginning, when we're being an identity which is separate from all things, then yes, it's like we've got, we've got choice, we've got free will. But then what happens is, after a while of traveling along the path, along, on the journey, we become pure presence. We become the absolute seer of all things. And then what's, what's going on is a flow of energy. The only real choice at that point is to be aligned with the flow until there's such alignment that no choice is really being made at all. There is just the flow. Mm. Yeah, it, it certainly is the flow. And you, you certainly feel like you're in the flow as well, don't you? Yeah. Just get that sort of feeling of oneness. and Absolutely. Uh, oh, no, it's amazing. Yeah. So just going back to the, um, the gateways as well, because uh -huh. this is kind of your uh, roadmap of helping people through a stepped process, isn't it, from beginning yeah. to end in a way. Yes. So I think that'd be really good to sort of go into that in more detail. Okay, sure. Um, yeah, what, what happened for me was the, the car crash, uh, my awakening, was really just the beginning. And from that experience, uh, I was taken, I, I found myself uh, guided on a journey through life, through life's experiences, confronting attachments, in myself, distortions, distorted behavior patterns, conditioned behaviors, confronting these behaviors and letting them go. And each, each, with each um, journey, with each uh, uh, experience or, um, or pattern of experiences I was having, I found that I, would I came to specific transitions of consciousness where there was some major events.